Well, Stevie, welcome to yourself and the rest of Fleetwood Mac to Australia and indeed to Countdown. Oh, thank you very much. It's good to have you back in the country again. It's good to be back. Well, lots happened since the, um, since the last tour, but if we can just go back further than that, of when you and Lindsay first joined the group, um, what were your sort of ideas of Fleetwood Mac at that stage? Uh, to just be in a band and to be working. Yeah. Because we weren't working. And uh, we were pretty depressed about our life in general because there was nothing happening. Were you both um, Fleetwood Mac um, fans at that stage? Not really. No? So what attracted you to sort of become part with Mick and the rest? They called us and asked us. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. Um, and the first album, which was the Fleetwood Mac album that you really recorded on, um, how different were the ideas of the rest of the band to, say, you and Lindsay? Or did not, it all gel not together? Not so very different. No? But, but you must realise that they were three people that needed some energy, and we were two people that needed some energy. So it was like, you know, it was, it was sort of like... <coughs> it was sort of like meeting someone and falling in love with someone mm. right away when you really needed to be in love. Right. And we all needed each other very badly. So it, w it was just one of those chemistry things that came along at the right time. And everybody was so delighted to have each other right. and to be this band instead of to be two separate entities that really didn't have much direction at that point. And one great song, which is a favorite of mine, I don't know if it's still of yours, which is Rhiannon. Um, can you tell me what you think of that song? Because it was a song that started to sort of put you right on the map. Well, I've sang Rhiannon about <laughs> three million times. Um, and I always love it. It's real hard on my voice. Right. Uh, it's the killer voice song of the evening. But uh, I never really get tired of it because it's it's my mystical thing, you know, that we, we would always have to do Rihanna and I don't think we could ever not do it. So I, because I know that, um, I continue to, to sort of be uh, a part of the story of Rihanna right. while it's happening so that it, so I don't let it get old for me because it's too taxing on me to let it get old. Well, let's have a look at Rhiannon now. Okay. Right, well, that was Rhiannon. Now, out of Rhiannon also came uh, the figure of Stevie Nicks, the more the sex symbol, which you seem to sort of shun and sort of, sort of say, no, no. Um, were you conscious of the fact that suddenly you had become sort of a sex symbol in the rock world? It was, it, it was somewhat hurtful to me because that isn't what I wanted mm. and that was everybody else's, how they were making it up. And so and my, my chiffon things that I wear are beautiful, beautiful things, you know. They are not, I didn't make them, they come down to here, you know, they're very diaphanous and stuff, but they were never made to be, uh, to be taken for what a lot of people took them for. So I had to fight along with it, trying to be able to keep doing what I wanted to do without being put in that bracket, you know. Coming from the Rumours album, uh, the critics sort of said, right, what are Fleetwood Mac going to do next? Can they um, possibly sort of upstage the Rumours album in sales? That They've got to come out with something extraordinary. And I don't think anyone expected the Tusk album to be a double album for a start. Uh, how come it was a double album? Because it had been several years. Mm. We have three writers. I write all the time. Lindsay writes a lot, Christine writes. And to have waited three years to have three or four songs, I mean, I write three or four songs in three months, mm. or more than that, was, isn't enough for me. Wasn't enough for Christine, and was certainly not enough for Lindsay. Right. So we had to do a double album right. in order to uh, be true to, to the fact that we are all writers. Right, now not only did one expect, not, expect it to be a double album, but the single task, which is the title track, was so completely different to anything you'd done oh, before wow. that I think you gave a bit of a... I think there was almost a shock culture for a lot of people before they could get into that particular song. Was that There was a purposeful? shock for me, too. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. What can we expect off this, off, off this tour from Fleetwood Mac? That's different from the last. An excited group of people. Yeah? After... Um, I mean, I must say again, after coming out of a month in Japan, mm. Um, a very excited five mm. people to be here because, I mean, it, we just feel so good here. 
I, I, I thank you for being on the show and we're really looking forward. The concerts are sold out all over the place, so you're going to play to capacity mm. houses. Thank you. But I'd like to now go into one beautiful song, which I think is the song on the album, and that's Sarah. It's the love song of this album. So thank you again, Stevie. Thank you very much. <laughs> 